Metal Gear Solid 2 is probably the most important PlayStation 2 game to come out this year because it is being considered by many to be the killer app for, for PlayStation 2, the game that really Sony needed at launch and didn't have. I think this is the, easily the best looking PlayStation 2 game. It just really illustrates the graphic and capabilities of PlayStation 2 and the talent that you know. 2001 is the year of the snake. Metal Gear Solid 2 is the sequel, of course, to the acclaimed 1998 PlayStation game Metal Gear Solid. It takes place roughly two years after the events of that game, and it involves Solid Snake and several other of the uh, characters that made an appearance in Metal Gear Solid. At the end of Metal Gear Solid, Revolver Ocelot apparently got a hold of the schematics for Metal Gear Rex, which was the gigantic walking tank with nuclear capabilities. Um, and he sold it to every state, country, and even dot-com corporation in the world. So now everybody has these Metal Gear Rexes running around. Uh, to combat this, the U.S. Marines developed a new Metal Gear, which they're calling Metal Gear Ray. This thing it looks like the American Godzilla almost, and it can swim underwater and it has particle energy beam weapons. And this is dubbed the Rex Killer because it's designed to go out and hunt down all the Metal Gear Rexes. It's superior to them in every single way. The game opens up with a film sequence that uh, was shown at ECTS. We have that sequence up on the site right now. Uh, it's basically where it shows Solid Snake walking down the George Washington Bridge, tearing off his poncho, breaking into an all-out sprint, and then he leaps onto the deck of this tanker. The tanker is supposedly carrying a brand new Metal Gear called Metal Gear Ray, which is a Metal Gear Rex killer. Rex being the Metal Gear that was in Metal Gear Solid 1 for the PlayStation. Um, that movie sequence lasts about 10 minutes and it involves Snake talking to Otacon, who is also from Metal Gear Solid. Otacon briefs him on the situation, tells him he needs to find out where this tanker is headed and find out the operational status of Metal Gear Ray. In the middle of their conversation, however, um, Snake notices some, some camouflaged person behind him. In a matter of seconds, the camouflage soldier slits the throat of the Marine and he calls out to Otacon, asks him what's going on, takes out his binoculars again, looks around and notices happening throughout the ship. Uh, it flips again to a cinema sequence showing the two helicopters unloading all these soldiers onto the ship and they methodically walk throughout the hallways and throughout the decks, executing all the soldiers very professionally in a matter of seconds and Snake turns to Otacon and he goes, the ship's theirs now. After that sequence is over, you, the game starts you're given control of Snake and that's that's a great feeling when you're holding the controller and you realize that you're now in control of Solid Snake and the rain is pouring down on you and, and you can look around in first person and third person you can walk around select the items and your weapons um, and then the, the, the game is yours The demo is basically a snake jumping onto the ship, uh, fighting the soldiers and on the various decks of the ship, and then it ends with a with a fight with Olga, who is a Russian, supposedly Spetsnaz. And after that fight is over, it'll say to be continued. The demo lasts about an hour if you're playing it the first time through. Really, it only takes 15 minutes to go through it if, if you've been it the first time. For example, Ken, the producer. He blew through it in 15 minutes, but it took me and Ben about an hour each to get through it. And it didn't take us one time to get through it. The demo's very hard. It took us several times to get through it. 
The gameplay is very similar to Metal Gear Solid. The camera is, uh, is set at a third person perspective. It's most of the time it's overhead snake, although there are some Resident Evil style angles where the camera is ahead of you off to the three quarter angle. Um, but in this game, um, Konami has made use of the first person camera a lot. You still can't move using first person mode, but you can aim, you can shimmy across bars, across ledges, um, and you can shoot. In fact, most of your shooting you'll find is done in the first person mode because you can fire much faster and you can aim much better. Um, for instance, in first person you can not only aim horizontally, but you can aim vertically. You can aim at the soldier's head, at his kneecaps, at his shoes. Uh, one famous scene in the E3 demo was when a soldier was holding up the uh, clear riot shield. Snake was trying to shoot at him, but he was missing, so he aimed downwards at his knees, shot him there, and that's how he got the kill. Snake starts out the game with nothing but a tranquilizer gun. It's a modified version of a Beretta M92F and it has to be reloaded after each shot. Now the nice thing about this gun is that the drug in the tranquilizer takes effect at different speeds depending on what part of the body you shoot. So if you shoot someone in the leg, it'll take a while for that drug to take effect. Whereas if you shoot someone in the neck or in the head or even in the chest, it'll be instantaneous. It'll drop them right away. There's an incredible amount of detail in Metal Gear Solid 2. For example, in the cruise lounge, you'll find a wet bar. And in this wet bar, you know, there are alcohol bottles hanging in the back, there are glasses, and then there's this bucket of ice sitting on the bar. You can shoot this bucket of ice and it'll spill forward and all the ice will get scattered on the bar. Now, if you look at the ice long enough, if you just sit there and stare, you'll see it just start to melt. And if that isn't detailed enough, the ice cubes that are alone will melt faster than the ice cubes that are stuck together. Right here, uh, as you can tell, he's in the cruise lounge and he is sh just shooting up a magazine rack. The magazines are, every time they're, hit, they're being hit by a bullet, are getting shred into smaller and smaller pieces. And you can continue to shoot the magazine until it's just a, a pile of paper. Also in the demo, there's a sequence where Snake will find himself in, the, in a food pantry confronted by three soldiers. Now, Snake will be on one side of a food cart and the soldiers will be on the other. This is also from the E3 demo. It's probably one of the most famous scenes from that demo, which we also have up on the site. Snake will have only a handgun, and he'll be shooting at the soldiers right through the food, right through the boxes of food, right through the, the, the bags of flour, and the soldiers will be doing the same. Now, as this is going on, the flour is just exploding in puffs of white. The, the boxes are spilling open, and, and tomatoes and apples and potatoes are are falling on the ground and it's leaving just a giant mess and at the end of the scene once all the soldiers are dead or once Snake is dead you look at the ground and it's just covered with mashed potatoes with flour with pools of blood with open boxes with, with sacks that are just torn apart and the the level of detail just in that one room in that one sequence is truly amazing. It, the game is remarkably similar to Metal Gear Solid in, in the control aspect. You have your dual analog sticks that control his movement. Um, if you press it to the extreme, he runs. If you n gradually nudge it, Snake will walk. Um, you have your items menu on the left-hand side, your weapons menu on the right-hand side. He can duck, crawl, f go in first-person mode. He has an action key that, depending on what kind of weapon you have equipped, will punch or or fire a gun and he has his 
patented strangle key. There are a number of new controls that Snake can do that he couldn't do in any of previous games. Things like he can uh, lean up against the wall, turn around quickly, fire his gun, and uh, hide back without ever alerting the enemy if, the, if he kills the enemy. Konami really addressed the AI issue in Metal Gear Solid 2. A lot of people who played Metal Gear Solid 1 were upset that you can shoot a guard in the back, run away, and 30 seconds later the guard will just forget about you. Uh, in Metal Gear Solid 2, the AI is, is a lot more complex. If, uh, if anyone comes upon a dead body or an unconscious body, uh, they'll raise the alarm. If it's unconscious, they'll actually kick him awake with a boot to the skull. If he's dead, obviously they'll leave him alone, but uh, they'll call others. In Metal Gear Solid 2, the radar is also improved. Um, like the first one, if you're spotted by an enemy, it goes into alert mode and it becomes useless. Alert mode lasts for about 5 seconds, and if you manage to avoid the soldiers for that length of time, the radar will drop into what's called evasion mode. In this mode, the, act the soldiers are still actively hunting you down for about 10 to 15 seconds. Now again, if you manage to stay hidden for 15 seconds, uh, the radar will drop into what's being called a caution mode. A caution mode is basically uh, like normal, like a normal radar, but the AI of the soldiers is still at a heightened state and their patrol paths are different because they know something's up, they either saw a dead body or they're still trying to find you. And this mode lasts a long time, between 30 to 60 seconds. Um, after that timer's over, then you get back to the normal radar mode. There are a ton of new moves that Snake can do now. He can jump over the side of a ledge and hang on to it while the enemy like runs by him. The enemy will stop, look around, get confused, and then walk away. Now while he's hanging on, Snake has a grip meter. If that grip meter reaches zero, he'll drop. So you can't hang for forever. But you can shimmy to the side and you can jump back up. And if you jump back over a ledge, it'll scare the soldier momentarily which will give Snake time to either take him out or run away. Snake can also pick up bodies because unlike Metal Gear Solid, the bodies in Metal Gear Solid 2 don't disappear. So if you kill a soldier, he's going to stay there and he's going to bleed on the ground forever until someone comes and finds him. So a new element that the Konami added into the game is the ability to pick soldiers up or drag them around and uh, you can either stuff them in closets or you can even throw them off the side of the ship. There's another new gameplay convention in Metal Gear Solid 2. Now if you remember in Metal Gear Solid, Snake could take his gun or just his fist and bang it on the wall to get someone's attention. Now in Metal Gear Solid 2, when Snake runs out of ammo, he can actually take one of his clips for every 12 shots and throw it in the general direction of the soldier. That'll distract the enemy and give Snake enough time to either run away or kill him. <laughs> Another cool thing about the game is uh, the use of shadows in Metal Gear Solid 2. They're not just for, for looks or for the pretty graphics. Um, there's a scene where Snake is walking down a corridor and it'll cut to a movie scene that prompts Snake to look at a, at a shadow of a soldier hiding behind a corner. You can't see the, sh you can't see the soldier, but you can see his shadow. Uh, these shadows play a very important role in the game because you can use them to spot soldiers and vice versa, soldiers can use them to spot you even if you're hiding. Uh, one of the new moves Snake has in Metal Gear Solid 2 is the ability to take someone hostage. Now this is similar to the chokehold he had in Metal Gear Solid, but if there are other soldiers around him, they'll hesitate to shoot because they'll hit their comrade. And Snake can have someone in that chokehold use him as a human shield 
and walk away to seek cover. An interesting part of Metal Gear Solid 2 is that if Snake is shot too much, he will bleed. When he is shot more than one time, his life bar will turn yellow, and every five seconds or so, a certain amount of his health will deplete, and will continue to do so once he do, does something about this. Now in the game, there are bandages, where if you're bleeding, you can just use them like you would any other item, and it'll stop the bleeding, or you can just crouch or crawl, in effect putting pressure on that wound. At the end of the game, Snake will run into a Cypher. A Cypher is an unmanned aerial vehicle that's being developed by the Sikorsky company. Basically, it looks like a small helicopter with a camera mounted on top. These things are made so that they can be sent in unmanned into hostile situations, survey the area, and get out without putting anyone at risk. Now, the ironic thing about, the, about its presence in the game is that throughout the demo, Snake is fighting Russian soldiers with Russian equipment, Russian helicopters, and then out of nowhere, this American UAV called the Cypher comes out, and it leaves, leaves you hanging with that. Yatsuranga Metal Gear.